All right, another common technique that you're going to have to go over with uh, many of your first level physics students is the addition of vectors, okay? Because velocity, acceleration, force, these are all vector quantities that are very important to understand when studying physics, okay? So on this diagram, I have a two-dimensional uh, diagram here with, uh, we have a y-axis and we also have an x-axis. And we have two vectors that are lying directly on the x-axis. Now this type of vector addition is pretty easy, okay? We have a blue vector called A, which is two units to the right, okay, which we commonly call the positive x direction. And we have a red vector, which is vector B, which is five units in the negative direction of the x-axis. Okay? And the problem that we have is, what is vector A plus vector B? Okay? Now when the problem is simple like this, and all the vectors are in one axis, all we really have to do is put the values in here. Okay? And so, uh, simply we can say that vector A is equal to 2, and we can add it to vector B, which is equal to negative 5, okay, it is negative 5 units, and 2 plus negative 5 is going to give me negative 3. Okay. So that's the mathematical way to solve for this problem of vector A plus vector B. However, it's good to show them the head-to-tail method as well for them to visualize it. Okay. And so the head-to-tail method says that you take vector A and then you put vector B on the end of it. Okay? So we have vector A going two units to the right, and I'm going to draw a new vector B in red, starting from the head of it and going backwards, one, two, three, four, five units. Okay? And so as I do the head-to-tail unit, I can see that my end point here is at negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3 on the x-axis. Okay? So whether if we just did a substitution for our units, uh, for our values, or if we use the head-to-tail method, we should still get the same answer that vector A plus vector B is negative 3. Now we're going to see when things are a little bit more difficult and when the vectors are both, uh, they both have x components and y components and what we have to do to solve for those problems. Okay, now this is a little bit more of a complicated situation. Okay, we have vector A, which is projected in the positive quadrant, and it is composed of both an x component and a y component. And we also have the same thing for B, which is in the fourth quadrant, which is six units long, and is projected at 30 degrees below the horizontal. Okay, now the problem here is we cannot just add vector A plus vector B and get a value of 10. Okay, that would be an incorrect mathematical usage of these vectors. What we have to do is we need to break each one into an x component and a y component using the previously documented strategy of so ka to. Okay? So this is going to be integrating a couple ideas together and, uh, and showing you a proper way to show your students how to approach this information. Okay, so the first step I like to do is I like to drop a dotted line from vector A to the x-axis. And that closes off our angles, our 60 degree angle, and provides us with a right angle. And now what we can see here is that our hypotenuse is 4, and we need to find out what the y component is and what the x component is. Okay? And so let's write that into this panel here under the A and we'll write AX equals and AY equals. Okay? And so now we need to get values for those. Well, how are we going to get values for those? Well, we know from our previously documented technique that if we have our 60 degree angle, that the X side is adjacent to it. And we know our hypotenuse, so that can only mean that we should use our cosine function. And so we would say the cosine of 60 degrees is equal to our adjacent x all over our hypotenuse 4. So 4 cosine of 60 is equal to x and the cosine of 60 is equal to 1 half so 4 times 1 half is equal to 2. So the x component of A is equal to 2 units. Now let's find out what the y component 
is equal to. And so what we have to do here is again we'll take the 60 degree angle into account and the relationship between y and the 60 degree angle is the opposite side. And so which function are we going to want to use to talk about the opposite? Well we should use the sine. So the sine of 60 is equal to y over the hypotenuse of 4. And so that gives me 4 sine 60 is equal to y. And the sine of 60 is root 3 over 2, which is about 0.8. So 4 times 0.8 is about 3.2. And so my ay is equal to 3.2. And you can see that both of our components, the x component is in the positive x direction, and the y component is in the positive y direction. So I'll we'll leave my values of ax and ay as positive. Now that we've done that, let's find the values for b. Okay. b is, again, in the negative quadrant, or at least in the negative y direction. And so again, let's use a similar technique we did and draw a dotted line from the end of b to my x-axis, or my horizontal axis. And again, what I've done is I've created a right triangle here. And I know the hypotenuse is 6, and I'm again trying to find out what x is equal to and what y is equal to. So, to get x first, we would say that the cosine of 30 is equal to x all over the hypotenuse 6. And again, doing the algebraic rearrangement, I would say 6 times the cosine of 30 is equal to x. And the cosine of 30 is equal to root 3 over 2, or about 0.87. So... 6 times that value is about 5.4. And so the x component is 5.4. And now let's solve for the y component. Okay, So the y component's relationship to the 30 degree angle is, again, it's opposite. And so we are going to want to use the sine function. So the sine of 30 is equal to y all over the hypotenuse, which is 6. So 6 times the sine of 30, which is 1 half, is equal to y, which is equal to 3. And what we can see here is that the y component is actually going in the negative direction. And so when I put in my values, I will say ax is equal to 5.4, while, sorry, this is bx, and by is equal to negative 3. And now we have classified what AX, AY, BX, and BY are. Okay? I've split my vector down into its appropriate components. Now to finish up and solve this problem, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to take my AX plus my BX. And that is going to give me a value of 2 plus 5.4, or 7.4. And I'll also do the same thing for my y components. Ay plus by is equal to 3.2 minus 3, which is going to give me 0.2. So... What this is saying is that my net vector, after I add up the components, should be 7.4 units long in the x direction and only uh, 0.2 units long in the y direction. Okay? So what should happen here is that if I were to do the head-to-tail method and draw vector B off of the head of vector A, you can see that our net vector would be somewhere where the x component would be 7.4 units long and the y component would be only 0.2 units long.